What is going on everyone? This video is on how to deploy third-party Python libraries with your Lambda function using SAM, which stands for Serverless Application Model. I'm going to be demonstrating this with PyCharm using the AWS Toolkit extension by deploying the Pandas Python library with my Lambda function. A couple months ago, I made a video on how to install Pandas on a Lambda function through the AWS console. So I wanted to follow up this video on how to do this with infrastructure as code, which does not have any manual steps of configuring custom Lambda layers. Now, if you're interested in following along exactly how I'm doing it, make sure to check out the requirements list I've included at the bottom of this page. All right, so I'm in my PyCharm IDE and within my project folder, we have a folder called Lambda, which contains our Lambda function that we want to deploy to AWS. And you can see I created a function called create underscore data frame. And what this function does is it simply just creates a small pandas data frame and returns a message saying that pandas has successfully been imported and will tell us the version number of pandas. Now, because pandas is a third party library, it does not come automatically installed with our Lambda function. So we either have to add it as a Lambda layer or we need to add it part of our deployment package. So we're gonna be adding it part of our deployment package using SAM. Great, so in order for us to tell our function, hey, we wanna use pandas, we need to go to our requirements.txt file, which should be under the same directory where you have your Python function. And we wanna make sure that we're adding the Python library. And we can also add the Python specific version that we want to add as well. Now, the reason I like to specify a specific version is I have no control if a new version, let's say 1.45, is going to break some type of dependency and cause my code to break. So I like to be explicit with my version number. Great. So now that we've added our library requirements to the TXT file, now we have to go to our template file. Now, this template is my CloudFormation template, which is going to be deployed to AWS. And this is really the heart of the infrastructure as code that we're going to be deploying. So as you can see here, my template has only one function, which is my Lambda function, and it's defined as create data frame. And here's where we can see that it is a serverless function, which means it's a Lambda. And under properties, this is where we're telling it, hey, where is this file in our repo? So uh, under code URI, we can see that it is called Lambda. So it's going to be mapped to this directory. And for a handler, that's going to be the name of the file. So create underscore data frame dot py, it matches. And then Lambda handler, this can be found in our Python file for the name of the Lambda handler over here. Great. And the last thing you should know about is our runtime, which is a requirement. So this is telling Lambda which runtime we're going to be using. So here I've defined it as Python 3.7. And under the global function, there's a timeout parameter. And this tells us how long we're letting Lambda run before timing out. Great. So now that we have our function, we're happy with what it does. Let's go ahead and deploy our Lambda function with the pandas library attached to it. So because I have the AWS toolkit installed, if I right click on my CloudFormation template, you're going to see a deploy serverless application button that appears. So if I click on this, we're going to get a menu. And because I've already deployed my application, I'm going to be doing an update stack and it's going to specify what the, the stack name is going to be. And the second parameter is the S3 bucket, which we're going to be used to stage our code for deploying to our Lambda function. We want to make sure that we're building locally before deploying. So this will allow us to use a Docker container. So we want to make sure that's checked off. And now if I hit deploy. So we're going to be building our function within our Docker container. So as you can see here, we're currently building. Now, as you can see, our function is actively deploying. And as you can see, we have all the events related to the deployment process to AWS. And if you were successful, you should see an update is complete. So now we have successfully uploaded our Lambda function to AWS. And one thing I forgot to mention is I've already authenticated with my secret key and access key. So if I click on it, so in order to see what profile you're using, the bottom right corner of PyCharm, you can see the specific credentials that you've used and the specific region that you're going to be deploying your application to. Great. So let's take a look at our Lambda function on AWS. All right. So I'm in the AWS console. And as you can see here, my Lambda function has been deployed. 
One thing I want to point out is when you're using SAM to deploy your Lambda functions, you will see that under applications, there should be an entry for your project. And this is the one that I've used. So we can see that it was last updated two minutes ago. So if we go back to our functions and if we click on it, now, in order to test to make sure it runs, I'm just going to quickly give this a test. Now, one thing I want to point out is because this deployment package is bigger than three megabytes, I believe, I'm not allowed to actually go through and edit the source code. However, I can still run it. So if I hit the test function button, and if you've already configured an event, I can hit the test button and we can see that we've successfully run our function. And if we look at our code, we see that we've successfully printed our pandas data frame and the specific version that we specified has been uploaded successfully. Great, so we know that this is working. One big pro of managing our code this way is it makes it very easy to change any version of our third party libraries and even change the runtime of our Python function. So if we go back to our PyCharm IDE, Without editing my Python function at all, I'm just going to go back to my template and we're going to change the runtime to be 3.8. And now I'm going to go to my requirements TXT. Let's say there's been a cool new feature in version 1.42. So we want to make sure that we're specifying that. Um, however, there's an added dependency. I'm just going to make sure I'm specifying that NumPy is equal to 1.21.5. And now let's go ahead and redeploy this. So let's go to deploy serverless application, update our stack again, and go to deploy. Great. So after a couple of minutes, our Python function has been successfully deployed to AWS. So if we go back to the console, we notice that our function has just been updated. And if we click on it, now if we check the code, you can see now that our runtime is Python 3.8. And let's just Give this a test to make sure it's working as expected. And there you go. So we now see that we are actually using pandas version 1.42 and we were still able to import and create a pandas data frame. So there you go. In this video, we've successfully uploaded a third party Python library using SAM through the AWS toolkit in Python. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video helpful and if you're interested in more videos on working with data on AWS, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again and see you next time.